Okay then, so here we have it, the car's main controls, the steering wheel, so the hand controls, including the gear stick, handbrake, so there's your hand controls, we've got down here, we've got the foot controls, A, B, C, do remember that you're going to be using the right foot for the brake and also for the gas or accelerator, the brake, and then we've got the clutch on the left hand side. The clutch then is going to be pressed down to change gears and also when we stop we need to press it down because we need to disconnect the engine from the wheels so let's look at the pedals in a little bit more depth first of all it's all down to the left leg i call it the clutch test first things first make sure that when you're activating the pedals that when you're pressing them this is really really important that you are using the ball of your foot so not your toes because you could slip off not the middle of your foot because you'll have no control and also when you lift back up off the clutch pedal the pedal will travel down your foot if you use the middle of your foot so do make sure guys that you're using the ball of your foot if it was your hands it'd be the hard part you know but in your foot it's the hard part below your toes for example that way we're gonna have maximum control so with the ball of my left foot contacting with the middle or the most prominent part of the clutch pedal that sticks outwards because the pedals are curved I'm going to press down to the floor with a ball of my left foot on the clutch pedal this seat is no good for me and if I was driving I'd really be struggling so I'm going to take time now to make sure that I'm set up efficiently hold the steering wheel for leverage because if you're facing down you could go flying backwards when you reach for the black bar they're all going to be different, but I'm guessing they're roughly the same in terms of moving the seat backwards or forwards. So holding on with this hand, reaching under with this hand, backwards and forwards. And I'm just going to move it forward a couple of uh, couple of notches. If you don't know what I mean by notches, just little. If you really quick and let go, you can be really delicate. Um, some cars are more finer than others, but let's have another look. So ball of the left foot down to the floor, and now, to be honest with you some drivers would leave that but for me i don't know if you can see but for me i've got to move my body a little bit to get that down so to me that's still a little bit of a stretch i reckon probably about two notches forward there's one there's two so let's have another look if i needed to get the clutch down quick style without any stretch yeah and i don't know if you can see it, but that's so much different bang down to the floor Okay, so just to recap that bit, we're operating the pedal with the ball of the foot and we're, press, we're, we're making contact with the middle of the pedal, the most prominent part that sticks out and that is going to determine where we have our seat. Alright, so clutch pedal down to the floor and there we go, absolutely perfect there for me. If we've set the clutch, we know the brake and the gas is going to be okay as well, as long as you've got two legs that are the same size. And I'm using the clutch you want some cars have got like a little rest at the side here which is quite useful because it sits um, a bit it's still not as high as the clutch pedal but it sits slightly higher um, different cars have different amount of space here you know where you can get your left foot up and over so what I tend to do when operating the clutch you know is you want to be really anticipating when you're going to use it next so that your left foot's almost hovering and covering now do you see naturally from where I've anchored my heel into the floor, my ball of my foot reaches the middle of that pedal. So if I slide my foot to the left, you see, actually, yeah, it does meet the middle of the pedal. This is really, really important. People with smaller feet may struggle slightly, but I would say it really depends on where you initially anchor your heel into the floor. So have a think about that and have a think about the fact that you need to be ready to press it down every time you stop we'll talk about the timing later and also every time you need to change gear okay so what I tend to do when I'm not using the clutch let's say I'm driving at higher speed for some time I tend to have my uh, left foot on the floor when I'm doing you know more higher speed driving or I don't anticipate any hazards ahead that could affect um, affect the speed because ultimately if your speed gets affected then you're going to need to be operating the brake and if you operate the brake you're probably going to operate the clutch um, so 
a lot of the time, you know, my feet are up and covering, and I call that covering position, and I might be referring to that throughout these lessons, covering position, and if you see my covering position, my feet are in the right place to actually press the pedals, so it's exactly the same with the right foot, uh, ball of the foot, pressing it down onto the brake, if ever we're going to be operating the pedals, it's going to be brake, 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 clutch down to follow, okay? So let's do that again. Brake, 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 clutch down to follow. When the clutch goes down, do make sure that you're not gentle. Make sure that you press it down like you mean it. Yeah, so don't press it slowly down because by the time you stop, you may have stalled, particularly when you start learning here. The foot brake now. Now, my foot, my right foot, you'll see where it's been the whole time. I'm going to remove my left foot from the equation now so that you can focus wholly on the brake pedal and the gas. Do you see where my heel is? This is really, really important. This allows me to be either on the gas or on the brake. Now I'm going to turn the engine on so that you can just... Because my right foot, again, it's the ball of my right foot that's, at, that's connecting with the gas pedal. And you'll see here how quickly and I can get on and set my revs. Most people, when they are setting up to move off, the reason it takes so long is because their feet aren't correctly positioned in the first place. He said the best advice I could offer you with driving is always to be ready for the next thing. But let's just keep it simple for now and uh, let's talk about how to operate the brake, okay? So most cars have got a dual braking circuit whereby it operates opposite, so the front right and the back left or the front left and the back right. And that's why sometimes if there is a problem with the brakes, the car may feel like it's pulling to one side when braking. When you're first starting off with your practicing, you're probably going to be travelling quite slowly. Maybe first gear to start off with. Uh, maybe you're in a, qu a quiet street, residential road, wide one with good visibility um, and minimal parked cars. Or maybe you're on a car park. But you really want to be just braking very, very lightly. All right. So I'm going to cover the pedal with half of my foot so that you can see the amount that I press it down. So when you practice your braking, practice it with the minimalist amount, thickness of a coin, there. See that? And off. There. And off. Start with that. I also want you guys to know that that activates the brake lights at the back. So the slightest touch, the brake lights are on. Now when you're travelling at any significant speed, that will not slow you down. Thickness of a coin and feel what that does for you as you're driving, okay? Just feel it. And if that's not enough and you're not slowing quickly enough, then what you want to do is have the thickness of, yeah, you guessed it, one more coin. Oh, that was about two and a half there. But, so, first coin, let's feel. Second coin, let's feel that. Third coin, and let's feel that. And what you might do, once, you get, once you're satisfied with how quickly it's slowing you down, uh, you might just keep that thickness the same then. And then what you want to do, and this is called progressive braking, when most people start learning to drive, it's always a head jerker when you stop, basically because you've stopped quite abruptly. So as you've got the, the right amount of pressure on, you then ease back off as the wheels, as the tyres of the car begin to stop. Let's move to the gas pedal otherwise known as the accelerator. Quick pivot from um, gas to brake and brake to gas if you need to. And the left foot only ever operates the clutch. All right, so just a couple of examples. If we're braking at say, I don't know, 20, 30 mile an hour, we would be brake, 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 clutch down. And then as soon as your clutch goes down, your left hand would reach generally for the next gear, depending on what you're doing. Important to remember that the clutch moves the car, not the accelerator because what the clutch does and I'll just show you a little picture now to help you to understand what that clutch does because when you're operating it and you feel the delicacy of it all it's quite important to understand you know what's actually going on under there so here we've got the engine and here we've got the wheels when you turn the engine on you see this shaft that's connected to the engine this is turning now, it's spinning. Uh, but it ain't doing anything because there's a gap here between these two plates, these clutch plates. If I now select first, so clutch down, then select first gear, and then bring the clutch up to the bite point, these plates will connect. 
so there won't be a gap in the middle anymore they will connect thus the engine turns the whole thing the, and this shaft connects together as one you could say and it turns the wheels as a result and that's why sometimes when we press the clutch pedal down to the floor these plates then spring back open and the drive to the tyres has been disengaged so I hope that makes sense when you get so far, far up on that clutch pedal as we said it's what's called the bite point and then a little bit further up and completely off the pedal the shaft is turning as one and you are at uh, full speed or tick over speed for that particular gear the brake and the clutch sit higher than the gas pedal now when you are operating the gas pedal it's the same again you want to be able to have that quick pivot or that quick spring from the from the brake or from the gas to the brake if you're on the brake so what you want to do when you set in gas I'll move so again as you can see quite comfortably from there my right foot the middle the ball connects look can you see now when you set the gas um, you want to practice setting it nice and quick about the thickness of a pound coin can you imagine that the thickness of a pound coin and that wants to be set okay so from brake to gas set from brake to gas set and what you'll find is that the first time you set it it'll be too high like that and set from brake to gas and set let's try it again from brake to gas set and you can hear that gentle hum uh, what I don't want you to do is get used to looking at the rev counter because that can be bad practice you know when you get into your junctions you'll be staring at the rev counter before you move off and preparing to move off and you'll be looking there when you move off so don't even look at that but just so you know what's going on it's usually about 1200 revs at the rev counter so we'll just do that once more and set you hear that gentle hum now that gentle hum in the background should be in the background for the whole time you know when you're about to move off you do need gas as well or actually likely to stall what the clutch plate does as it connects is there's like little grippers uh, it's a bit more in depth than that diagram I showed you but there's like little grippers you need to keep the clutch still as you release the handbrake for those grippers to grip together and the clutch plates to turn as one whole one okay so one more time from brake to revs and set Done. and you just keep that noise on the whole way it's not like you're increasing or anything and what most people do here is they tend to when they find the boys they tend to come off the gas you know because the left foot's coming up so if I was to show you, if I if I went to first gear now and went to find the bite, and I will show you how to do that in a minute properly, but if I had the gas set already, which it should be, it should always be gas first, when I come up off the clutch, most people tend to come up off the gas as well without realising. So there's something to look out for. The other thing to look out for is the rev counter. So if I set the same amount of revs that I just set and revs on, so that was the first time when I was too heavy, if I do it again, revs on, that's too light, let's try that revs again, there, perfect, and you'd keep that set throughout the whole thing, now watch what happens when I come off the revs, the rev needle reverts back to tick over, now tick over is when you turn the engine on, and every gear's got a tick over speed as well, which I'll teach you about a little bit later on the course. It's absolutely crucial to understand it. Yeah, so as you can see, the foot's just in the natural position, just to pivot across. We're gonna look at what's called the slide and dig routine for the clutch. Always before moving off, it's always gonna be revs on. So revs are set. Clutch down using the ball of the left foot. As we said, into first gear. And then we're looking to find that bite point. So watch the heel. I reckon it comes back about a good inch, inch and a half, so slide, dig, and then the ankle finds the bite point. So here we go, slide, dig, bite, there. So let's do that again a bit quicker, slide, dig, bite, there. And there's various degrees of the bite there, up, down. The reason it slows when you go down on the clutch is just because you're disconnecting the drive between the engine and the tyres, like I said earlier. So just one more time, clutch on the floor, back up to bite and heel dug and bite so you can do it in one action the more you practice it don't skip this bit do spend time practicing this particular bit and bite clutch the floor and bite clutch the floor and bite so we've got a holding biting point we've got 
a driving biting point and a driving biting point is where when you release the handbrake you, your tyres will start moving forwards. A holding biting point is where the car wouldn't necessarily move forwards but you would definitely wouldn't roll backwards at a holding biting point and with a holding biting point it's just really subtle you know when you find the bike. I can make this a holding biting point by just pressing down on the clutch a millimetre or so and keeping it there. If in doubt, lift up the tiniest bit. Can you see that? Just slightly. There. So you, I'm not where I started. I'm not where I just was. I'm, I'm at the third different setting, if you like. Really have a play around with this. Move my foot away from the gas. When I'm driving, that wouldn't be the case. And I'm, you know, when I'm getting ready to go, the gas would be on during this whole process. When you find the bite, uh, the appropriate bite ready to move off or prepare for gradient I always think about the gradient because it depends you know it's going to alter the way you set your feet if it's uphill downhill or flat take a look now at what the bite point should look like from the front of the car so I'm going to find where I call the tug point and the reason I would use the word tug is because you'll see the front of the car tug forward slightly so I'm in first revs on and slide and dig routine and bite point a couple of things that I've mentioned that could be important the accelerator or gas pedal slows you down as well so if you come off the gas, as I showed you earlier with the rev needle, that's the speed of the car reducing if you're actually travelling. So that's that's a good one to be using for good planning. The clutch can slow you down in slow moving traffic. Pressing the brake pedal a couple of millimetres will activate the light and most newer cars have got three. So I hope that was making complete sense to you, that section. We now at the point where we move on to mirrors, so the use of mirrors and zones of vision. So the first thing to understand is where your zones of vision are. Peripheral vision is, if, you, if you've never heard of it before, it's the corners of my eyes. So for example, I just use my finger on this occasion, when it starts to come into view is about there. And I can see my finger, my one finger upright now, just from looking forwards. Any further, I'd have to physically check. So I can, that's, my, that's the limits of my peripheral vision. All these zones of vision are covered, my left peripheral, right peripheral and forwards just by looking forwards. So the next thing we've got then is the centre mirror, and that gives us an exact view out of the back windscreen. So the way that you want to set this, you don't want to be holding it like this because you'll cut off half of the view. So this is your picture frame and you want to be framing the back screen so that you can maximize your view out of there. The way to do it is remain in your driving position just looking straight forward and literally lean with one hand only your left, your body dead straight and your head straight. Remember you're not really turning your head when you're checking your mirrors. So back to side to side and as you can see it alters the view. You're going to see me in a minute. There we go. You want to be maximizing your view out of the back and once that's set the door mirrors we really want to be setting it from a position where you are sat in your driving position and you're not looking to the side okay can you see that in the reflection you can see 10% of the bodywork of the car in the uh, in the door mirror there about 10% 10 15 20% okay no more than that it's important that we see the bodywork of the car so that we can see where we are in relation to other things. The left one is going to be good for parking in terms of knowing how close the bodywork of the car is to the kerb. If you see too much of the bodywork of the car, then you're just going to be looking at the car and it's not going to be showing you potential hazards and things at the side of you. So the set instruments again is 10% of the bodywork in the door mirrors, both door mirrors, half earth, half sky in the distance. You should be able to see the door handle in the bottom inside corner. If you can quite see that there, you should be able to see the door handle in that. Um, that means that it's a good rough guide of the halfway point of the car. Things look further away than they actually are in the door mirrors. And the reason being is because the door mirrors are convexed glass. So it means that it's curved glass. The reason it's curved glass is because it's trying to get into the blind spots. Okay? The bigger the vehicle, the bigger the blind spot. And you're going to need to um, figure out how to adjust the door mirrors in your own particular car. If you're doing the test in your own car and you have got an older car that hasn't got electric door mirrors, it is perfectly fine for you to ask the examiner, you know, if you want to set the left door mirror down for a manoeuvre, you know, if you want to point the glass downwards, it's perfectly acceptable for you to ask the examiner to just adjust it 
as required. So the way I would go about it is, you know, you might go down, 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 stop, left, 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 if you need, and then stop, and then you'll get them to reset it. But just be really clear if you do do that. So yeah, making sure then that you understand that uh, the door mirrors are convexed. So it's really important, you know, later on we do lane changes and things like that. The centre mirror is flat glass. It gives a true image like you'd receive from a mirror at home, for example. The blind spots. We've got all the angles covered now, apart from the blind spots. We've got the front view covered from looking forwards. We've got the peripheral vision covered, left and right. We've got out the back covered from our centre mirror. We've got the sides of the cars covered from the door mirrors. So the things that could be in the blind spot then on the right, there could be uh, junctions, driveways. And on this particular occasion, um, just showing you an example of a junction being in your blind spot. You know, so I'd have to physically turn to see that. Or, and because the mirror wouldn't show it, can you see? If you're looking down the mirror, um, looking down the road, it doesn't show. There could be a cyclist coming through, and you've got to think about sensors as well, because you use our sensors a lot when we're driving. You wouldn't necessarily hear a cyclist come in, or maybe an electric car, or even a pedestrian crossing the road. Um, so it's definitely worth, you know, always checking. And what I normally do before I move off from the side of the road is I do a six-point check. So I'll start from the left left blind spot, looking over my shoulder. You sometimes see out the side window there. So left shoulder, left door mirror center mirror so you know the road behind and also the road ahead while i'm going right door mirror and then to finish off the right blind spot and we've got all the angles covered there okay um so it's a li literally sort of a good lean over and making sure that you can see it so there's a car that's just come to the junction so that could be turning my way for example just at the point where i was to move off the reason i check my left shoulder before i move off is because there could be a car coming out of a driveway that could be what I call a developing hazard. So as I check around on the other zones of vision, I didn't see the developing one over my left shoulder. And when I look over the right shoulder, it looks all good. And then I look back forward, and that car at the point where I'm looking back forward here has then started to go around me and is heading down towards, um, you know, the white building in front for example so if you do a six point check you literally can't get it wrong though if you do read it in the essential skills the only ones that are absolutely mandatory that you must check um, would be the center road ahead of course right door mirror and right blind spot do make sure when you move off that your right blind spot check is really up to date so before we do move on we need to think about your indicators because you are going to be using these on your first drive the way you want to think of your indicators is when moving off and pulling back in at the side of the road only signal if it would benefit anybody else so basically on this particular car it's on the left hand stick and you can see normally if you have a look you'll see all the little icons on there one on the right has different icons so do have a little look at that they often have little twisties on the end of the stick as well so basically if i need to signal i'm just going to lean forward with the fingers up for right and you can see it flashing there now when you cancel do it with your fingers do it really gently or else you'll be going you'll be going from right signal to left signal to right signal so just really gentle look and it should bounce itself off and then left is down on this particular car and then you see it flashing but in the other side again just tap upwards gently to cancel now um, I will talk more about why the reasons why we would only signal if there's anybody to benefit but those are your signals remember to get in touch with your senses as well you can hear the tick tocking you can see it at the corner of your eye the green lights and obviously you can feel it when you put it on okay so that's that's really important there and the way to remember it as well if you can't remember if you think about it you would steer down with the left hand wouldn't you so it's down on the indicator stick one more thing to go just before we do get driving one thing that i haven't mentioned yet is the seat belt so just to make you aware it's um anybody below the age of 14 it's the driver's responsibility that everybody wears the belt anybody 14 or above it's their own responsibility when putting the seat belt on make sure that you the best way to grab it is just with your thumb and pull outwards like this um, because you really want to avoid having any twists in it and then just grab the top like this and just pop it in so make sure there's no twists particularly if you've got pregnant passengers because if this is twisted basically 
there's less surface area so that's you imagine the force on impact all of a sudden you're traveling and you stop well this is the thing that's going to stop you so if there's less surface area that could do some real damage be aware that wearing it like this isn't going to stop your front end from going forwards in the event of a crash um, so over the shoulder and the way that you test it, it's in full working order is give it a tug and it could test pull a bit more test pull a bit more test pull a bit more test you'll generally find that your examiners will do that if you see them doing that when they put the belt on that's the reason why they're just testing it all works times we're going to use the handbrake is yeah when we're parking when a momentary pause becomes a wait so if you're waiting for those couple of cars at the junction and, and all of a sudden there's a 10 more that comes and you're not going to take the gap that you initially thought you were so you know a two three four second wait now is becoming a long pause then use the handbrake put it on that allows you often to come off the brake and set the feet up you know what was going over just when we were saying uh, you know come off the brake so as soon as the handbrake goes on set revs and then find bite remember in that order so it can keep us still, you know, if we're at a junction, for example, and it's downhill, well, we can come off the brake with confidence then, can't we, knowing uh, that it isn't going to roll forward, for example. So that's one of the instances where we can use it. The other time is if we are on a hill or we're approaching a hill and we have to stop, and for whatever reason, we haven't had time to set up the feet and balance the car still at the holding biting point with revs on, then we would use the handbrake, because again, for the same reason, we can come off the foot brake with confidence, knowing that we're not going to roll anywhere, and prepare for the hill, or prepare for the gradient. Okay, so that's the instances when we'd use the handbrake. What the handbrake actually does is it locks the back wheels. All right, and there is no dead set way to put it on or off. Some manufacturers' handbooks will tell you to just literally pull up until you feel the resistance and make it click. So let's have a look at that. About there really is the limit. You can see it's sort of quite upright there compared to when it's fully down. If it's a newer car, it's probably not going to have to lift up so much before it, before it um, locks the back wheels. Let's look at the other way you can you can um, put it on, and that's by pressing the button in and lifting up till you feel the resistance. So the first bit, there's nothing, there's nothing going on there, nice and free and easy. And then the next bit is we're going to come to a bit where this is a bit more difficult to lift up. When it's at that bit, note I've still got my thumb pressed in on the button here. Lift up and then let go of the button let go and it'll latch into place and then I could literally come back off the foot brake then and the car so the handbrake should secure the the car and, and keep it keep it still now a really big one here is taking the thing off it sounds really easy doesn't it but so many people get it in a bit of a in a bit of a muddle uh, you want to make sure that it's off and it's come all the way down before you start thinking about driving on so it's one thing at a time so it's your, your routine which we'll go over again in a little bit prepare observe and move and just as you're about to move, the handbrake would go all the way off. Now, don't let go of the silver button before it hits the ground. So here's the ground, and we'd identify the ground by the noise and the feel. So the next thing, then, is the gear stick and gear selection. So obviously, your car could be different. You don't look at them when you're driving, but you've normally got the odd numbers at the top. So in this case, it's 1, 3, and 5, and 2, 4, and 6 at the bottom. Reverse, then you can't normally get reversed by accident unless it hasn't got a lever so this has got a little lever can you see there two this is how i do it two fingers underneath one thumb on the top lift up and pressing and then across at this point then you want to do again another dry run another dummy run with a gear stick and the selection of the gears so if the engine's off you don't have to put the clutch down but i'd probably recommend it for practice purposes so yeah ball of the left foot clutch to the floor and then the best thing you want to do is use something called the palming technique so you never want to be holding the gear stick like this or grabbing it or putting too much effort into it okay so let's forget that straight away move that away the gear stick is spring loaded okay so if you're in second gear and I push forward it will pop back to neutral if I'm in sixth gear and I push forward it will pop back if I'm in fifth you get the idea 
So because gear sticks are spring loaded, we want to work with that, okay? So if we're gonna go to first gear from neutral, neutral's your parking gear which sits directly in the middle and the gear stick points directly up to the roof, okay? It's perfectly f sort of square on top if you like. Um, because I want you to get in touch with your senses a bit more with this, so to feel and hear. Um, we don't really want to be looking at the gear stick when we're driving, of course, that's the main thing here. So if we're gonna go first gear, we want to palm the gear stick to the left. Did you hear? Obviously you didn't feel it, but if you were doing it yourself, like I'd like you to practice, you're gonna feel this and you're gonna hear it. All gear sticks are different and have different spaces, spacing throughout the gears. Some have slightly smaller gear sticks, as in the stick itself isn't as long, and different spaces between the gears. So first gear is gonna to be to the left and then forwards into first, and you have to push past the bit of resistance when you get to the um, middle. So left and then, yeah, bit of resistance there. So left and um, follow through with it. What I would advise between each gear change, uh, just keep your clutch pressed firmly down, uh, particularly if the engine's on of course, or I should be stalling, but put your hand back on the wheel in between each gear change so it replicates replicate what you're doing when you're driving. And what I would advise you when you go through your gears is that the first time you do it, you look at the gear stick because you've never done it before. So we're going to look this time. We're going to look at the gear stick. And we go through. So the logical order would be gear 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, and 5 to 6. This is a six-speed car. We will look at block changing later on, but let's keep it simple for now. So if you're going first to second, it's hand placement, okay? So if you're changing gear on the move, the clutch would be up first of all. So you would go clutch down, and then you would push left first on the gear stick. Do you see that? And then you just go backwards on it, all the way. So there's quite a lot of space between when it's forwards and when it's backwards. So another little tip when you're driving is feel the gear stick. If it feels backwards, that's a big difference from when it's forwards. You know, when it was backwards, where was it? About there, for example. So there's quite a lot of difference. If we're going to go second, so basically keeping it pushed to the left, it can't spring. If I grab the gear stick from first, it's going to spring because it's designed to do it, if you remember me saying. See what I mean? So you're going to go first to second, it's going to be a right job. You're going to go bounce back to neutral, then you're going to go left, back to into second. It's pointless and uh, it's unnecessary. The other thing is, unknowingly, if you don't use what, what I call the palming technique, you're going to go actually into four clutch up without realizing and if that's the first attempt at your driving it could affect your confidence and things so that's really important want to get that right first off okay so i'm just going to go through it now so back into first gear let's say um from first to second so palm left and backwards now into second from second to third now so now what we're going to do is a forwards palm okay so just straight forward bounces and then we know because it's spring loaded, it always springs back to its default position into neutral. And then it's just a case of going straight forwards on it. All right, so let's look at that again in quick real time. Straight forwards, and you're not pushing it, you're not pulling it, you're working with it, okay? I'll put my hand to the side so you can see the gear stick a bit better. Spring in the default neutral, and we know that third always sits directly above that. So straight forward into third let's look at that from a different angle there as one now three to four they're always generally going to be in the same line so don't hold it don't grab it you'll end up in second or sixth or reverse if that's um, the way that your car is straight back you see this with that bit in the middle where you surpass neutral that's all fine and then if you were going from four to five you would palm it forward Again, work with it. Don't push too hard and don't grab because what, what that does is you're going to go past the beginning, past the neutral part. And if I let go of that now, do you see, I've put it beyond neutral, so I'm likely to go into the wrong gear using that method. All right, so we're in neutral. So let's say we're in fourth. We'll go forwards to the right this time. So again, you can feel it hit that sidewall. You will hear it when you're driving. And then while you've got the pressure to the right, again, not grabbing, not holding, just push forward. If you're going from five to six, you're going to put the pressure towards your left leg, if you're in the driving seat, that is, and you're going to go backwards. So it's a really efficient way of navigating the gears, using your senses and not using your eyes, because you want to keep your eyes on the road. So best practice now is go through the gears, looking, hand on the steering wheel in between each gear change. Then... 
do it again but without looking this time and go through the whole thing and then start doing block changes so you, you might decide to start to, um, you know because you might once you're driving you're going to be going sort of three to one if you stop and things like that okay so the steering don't think too hard about the steering these days steering is power assisted it's really really light so the worst thing that you can do is to grab hold of this too much because if you do uh, you're going to be fixed to the steering wheel i always refer to it as a clock and so if you see that red band's at the top at the moment if i want to do half an hour steer i might pull from the top and pull down to the bottom that's half an hour on in one so um, if you are fixed to the steering wheel like this you're only going to be able to do this and then you're going to run it because this arm comes down of course and it hits the body and you can only steer that much so when you pull down with one hand kind of let go with the other and remember you're only really ever steering with one hand the other hand is only ever there to supply the next half an hour of steering if you like if you've got quite a sharp turn uh, and just to steady it you know so the right hand can be more dedicated to holding the wheel while the left hand performs operations with the ancillary controls such as demisters um, indicator stick changing gear there is no dead set way of actually steering so you can hold it at if this was a clock we could say 10 o'clock and two o'clock or we could go for a three o'clock and a nine o'clock i like to be generally more about a three and a nine o'clock sometimes I might rest my thumbs on this bit but I'm always a really loose grip the grip tends to get a bit harder if you're on like you know like a faster road or something like that because you've got to be aware that if you go over a bump at high speed the wheel could pull so that's something to be aware of DT1 which is the guidance notes for driving test examiners so this is their guidance notes for driving for marking the test states that the driver of the vehicle must remain in full control at all times it does not state a required method okay so if the wheel slipping back through your hands makes you uncontrolled then you need to look at why if you do it effectively it shouldn't and you'll see me doing it throughout this video because sometimes I might not always but most of the time I probably will because it like, keeps for a nice smooth flow of the wheels they almost take themselves off you know after you've completed a turn so that's that's worth thinking about and don't worry if you do cross your arms sometimes it's necessary but what I would say is a lot of the time it's not necessary common faults that I see with steering that does affect control is you know if somebody's turning left they'll use their right arm to turn left and so what that'll do is they won't follow the curb not quite nicely you know if it's a sharp left bend or if it's a, a roundabout or whatever and what does happen is you can run out of steer because if I'm using my right hand for all the steer for one what the hell's the left hand doing it's not doing anything and you're only going to get to there most look and then that's it so if I've still got turn to do I'm gonna be like I'm, and I'm running out so really that shouldn't have done that the left hand should have so let's divide it down the middle left hand for left steer right hand for right steer okay when the right hand gets down to the bottom the left takes over so it's like grab with the right and slide with the left right down then when the right gets to the bottom because the arm hits the body you don't want to carry on steering because you'll end up in that position so when the right comes down the left hand which has moved down with it at the same time you can practice this with a plate or something circular if you wish grabs and then the right hand lets go the left hand pushes upwards and the right hand gets ready if you need to to grab and pull back down so same again so you should be able to your grip should be that loose that you can feel and or rather you can hear your hands running through the steering wheel okay we've got the airbag on the steering wheel so it's another good reason why not to be in a massive habit of crossing your arms now if the airbag was to go off and your arm was over here have a guess where this arm's going to go because this this is where you're at well one of your many possible airbags might deflate from um so it's going to it's going to smash through there and it's going to come out at a speed where my arm potentially is going to smash me straight in the face uh the airbag airbags won't deploy unless the car's traveling at a certain speed check out 
uh, manufacturer's handbook for further info but it's definitely just worth being aware of there as well I'm just going to give you a little demonstration on the steering now the the only purpose of this demonstration is just to make you just so you can sort of watch how I would steer naturally I'm not going to put on a show I'm literally going to reverse out of this car park or reverse out of this space show my steering uh, maneuver around the car park get to the exit do a few couple of turns and you can just have a look at how I go about my steering I might do a little bit of talking through and I might dem and I might even demonstrate you know when I said people steer with if they, if they turn left they steer with the right arm and they run out I might show you actually on the move how that works so yeah I hope this is going to help you a little bit okay so here goes my POM routine at the moment, prepare observe move, just got pedestrian walking in the back of the car which is why I didn't go, holding the weight on the handbrake at the moment, so just have a look at the right arm, that's doing the majority of the student, because the left arm is busy of course, it's all clear, so keep it in the bay, look I know there's no car there, if there was a car there I'd have to be careful not to steer too early, so I'll take a bit of that steering off, That's a lock on there. So that's one and a half steers usually for the general car. Now, because my left hand's busy changing the gear, my right hand's ready to do. It's down here basically. Uh, the airbag wouldn't go off at such low speed, and it's going to allow me to wrap that wheel around. And because I've got quite a lot of steering to do here, if you can see, to get around. Um, car coming round. So again, I really like look. So I'm always positioning the hand for the next steer, really. I've gone a certain way over there because there was a big pothole. Maybe you spotted it. Um, in case you thought, <laughs> thought I was about to hit the wall, there was a reason why. So if I'm going to turn right, yeah, again, I'm going to lead with the right. Just wait for that car to come down. I uh, should be careful pointing, really. really to be honest because it's quite hazardous down here so just passing the wheel through really and as I'm doing it I'm positioning my other hand for the next bit of turn same again and I might position my left hand to start taking that left steer off a bit earlier because that's important you know the timing to take the steering actually off otherwise you end up snaking after a turn like this because you, you might have oversteered and then not took it off in time thumbs on the wheel is quite good it just helps you to sort of steady things as you can see it's it's left turn here right though to take it off if you needed take it off it was a minimal amount of steers so it didn't need it and it's going to be a right steer here so predominantly the right side so again like I said earlier like we're just doing that invisible line down the front right for right and then left for left left I'll do it I'll do a few junctions and then uh, I think that'll be it for this little tutorial on steering you guessed it it's gonna be left hand now we'll look at steering timing when we come to doing the junctions all right because that's important it's all right getting the steer technique down but if the timing's off then you're gonna be going wide or hitting curbs so for straight line driving it's a it's a neutral balance between both hands on the steering wheel Nothing too, nothing too grippy. Look, it's not going to jump off away from me. So as you can see, using my right hand there. So if I'm turning right at the next junction, what hand do you think is going to lead the turn? Think about this before I get there and see if you're right. So I'm turning right. Did 
you get it right. Yeah, it's the right arm. And I was a bit quicker coming out of that bend. It was all quite wide and open and visible. But the faster you're going, the faster you're going to need to steer. And that's when the method comes even more, becomes even more important. So like here, I've got to steer to position with a curb, you see, on the junction. And what that does is it makes things, and again, an extra left and the right off. But look how accurate that is. I'm going to take next road on the right. And let's have a look at this. restart the engine and it's like it never happened so I'm turning right here what hand do you think I'm gonna use you don't have to say it out loud if you're watching the video it'd help if I got the right gear uh, what um, what hand do you think I'm gonna use that's right I'm gonna use the right now if I use um, if I use the left hand to turn right here watch this Oh, 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 oh. You see, I needed the extra, so I could have hit that car on that occasion. I hope that helps with putting the steering into practice a little bit. Don't overthink it, just take it as it comes, because really, everybody's slightly different with the steering. The only thing that matters is the end outcome. If you can develop your method to be safe and effective, so be it. Mm -hmm. 